My name is David Bondaroff. I played Mike in the short film Print, written and directed by Nick Garcia. My name is Tommy Walker, and I played the role of Ryan in the short film Print. I heard about the project from Nick himself. He reached out to me after I was working with him on Forensic Connection, another film they did together. Um, and after working with them through the Manhattan Monologue Slam with Phil Galinsky. Auditioning for the role of Ryan was really something that I just didn't expect at all, and I'll tell you why. When I got to the audition room, I realized that I was the only one in the waiting room. Uh, I, there, were, there were no other actors out there waiting for me to, or, or, or waiting to, to audition for the role. And so uh, they called me into the room, Mike and Nick both called me into the room and they handed me the sides. And uh, so I, I, I read along with them and, and, and we just had, we had a blast really. It was, it was a really fun process to go about it. This was the first time that I was actually meeting Nick and Mike. And uh, so the, once, I, once we were done reading and, and Nick gave me a little bit of direction on, on what to do and how to go about uh, portraying the character of Ryan. And right after all of that happened, I sat down, they sat down and it was fun. The best part about it is that they go, okay, well listen. They slid the script over, over the table, and, and my name was printed on every single page. I said, listen, we really didn't have any auditions for anybody else. We, we, we want you to be the role. We want you to, to do it. And that was so humbling to me. Um, I, I, just, I didn't expect any of that. Who, so, so who's gonna say no, okay? But over time, over time getting to know these guys and doing rehearsals and stuff, I was just so happy that they did that. And right then and there, it was like a match made in heaven in the workplace. It really was great. I really wanted to be a part of this project because I was graduating college at the time. I was moving to New York City, you know, big city dreams of acting. And these guys shooting with a 4K camera, like professional equipment, had the spot all set out. You know, it was a, it was a dream come true. It was, and, and they're people I like, you know, that's, and that's hard to find. So that's definitely why I chose to work on this. What really actually attracted me to say, wow, I'm, I'm glad I'm a part of this, was reading the script. When I was at the audition, Nick, when Nick, when Nick handed me the, uh, the script, he goes, listen, read it, read it when you get home. Uh, there is a twist at the end. So I went back home. Actually, I don't even think I went home. I went to some park and I was reading the script right after that. And it was, it was uh, in the evening. And so I'm, I'm reading the script in the park and I get to the end and there is this awesome twist to, 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 the, to the story where I just, I, I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm glad I'm a part of this. I'm glad I'm a part of this. The role of Mike was super li relatable to me. You know, I had a man bun at the time. You know how much I got for having a man bun? I mean, it just, it fit so well with everything the character was thrown. You know, by by uh, Tommy, he was playing Ryan. Yeah, it, I could totally relate to, to Mike. As far as it goes for being relatable to me, not really. Um, I, I can be a bit of a, a, a ball buster in a sense, but uh, I don't take it as far as my character takes it. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. I'll just leave it at that. I'll, I'll let you decide. To be honest, I would not get along with Mike in real life. We are two completely different people. This, uh, this character is, has no chill. He's like, uptight about everything, takes everything way too seriously. I think, um, I think he's a little bit of a douche, right? I mean, well, when you watch the film, you'll know. But uh, yeah, yeah, th those are my thoughts on Mike. <laughs> I like the character that I played. Uh, he, he's funny. I found him funny. Uh, he's a bit of a jerk. Announcement. Um, but I, 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 I like him. I like him. I'd get along with him. No, not really, man, but. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. So you. much as we would be buddy buddies and holding hands and skipping through flowers, you know, but I would be like really cool with them. You know what it is? The character actually reminds me of the jock in high school that, that was walking around in the hallways and he was just poking fun at everybody, but doing it like not trying to be malicious about it, um, but in a sense just, you know, that, that's just how he was able to uh, communicate with his peers in high school. So I think that's, that's the type of role that he is. All right, some funny things I do with my iPhone. It's particularly with Snapchat. You know those filters where it, you can only see your face, like in the bunny costume when it's dancing? <laughs> so I'll do that filter, and so you only see my face. 
but when you turn the, your face away, you can see everything, the bunny filter goes away. And so I'll do it when I'm like naked. <laughs> and so you'll not know I'm naked until the last second when you can just see everything. And I'll only send it to like, like people that just like my dudes, you know, like, like college buddies. It's ridiculous, I know, but it's my sense of humor. <laughs> Funny or interesting things I have on my phone. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you can't ask me that, man. Come on. Come on. I don't have, a, okay, I'll just, how about this? I don't have anybody, I don't have pictures of penises on my phone. How about that? Anybody, or take, or urinating in the bathroom. I don't have that. I don't think I've experienced much of what's happened in the film. No one's ever, like, taking, taken pictures of me without my permission. Um, but I've definitely, like, wanted revenge before for sure like that's something i think we've all felt but i have a little more willpower to stop myself from freaking out unlike mike my character i've never been the one to go and exploit uh a co-worker or a friend and i really was never the victim of being exploited uh, such as David's character was. Uh, so I, not really, um, but to dive into that in a, in a scene in Make Believe Land, abs it, was fun to, it was fun to do. But I, I, I don't really think, at least right now, I can't recall any of the times that uh, <laughs> that was on camera in my, own, in my own reality. I don't think that ever happened. To be honest, I love Mike's man bun. I think it's the best thing ever. It's, it's so funny. Uh, I think uh, it really worked well with the character. It wasn't originally written in, actually. Um, I told Nick that I had a man bun at the time, and he was like, oh man, I guess, all right, I'll write it in. And he made it work so well. It fit the character perfectly, and that's something I love about the character, the man bun. What I love about my character is that he's just so outgoing. He's an outgoing guy. He does want to have fun. Um, and I don't believe that he does it maliciously. I don't think that he, want, that he intends to be vicious to David's character, Mike. Uh, I, I don't think he intends to be vicious at all. Um, but what I don't like about the character is that he's aloof and he's just so, he's a space cadet. And he, and he just, he doesn't realize that, yes, he, he's having fun, but in the process, he's hurting somebody's feelings. And that's one thing that I don't like about that character. But, you know, it, it is what it is. Sorry, David. I have a love-hate relationship with Tommy Walker's laugh. It is a cackle. It's like this shank, you know, where like once he laughs, he gets in your face and it just, it points, it digs right into your side, like, and you don't know whether like he's like, about to like jump you or if he's just like being friendly because he's just laughing directly in your face and it's a love-hate relationship with it and I think Tommy does such a good job you know because it's not, that that this character it doesn't really seem like him to me and he just does such a good job what I loved about David's character uh, was just that how he could just take the punches from my character and he's you know he just he still fights Dude, back he's at his job he's trying now. to be professional and uh, I think that's that's what I like about his character what I don't like about his character was that was that man bun it was just he needed a haircut but you know it was good for the role I love David love the guy love Dave David's like a brother to me but that man bun had to go thank god he doesn't have it anymore the biggest challenge of working on a comedic film is not breaking every single take. It was so hard for Tommy and me to like keep ourselves composed on set. Man, we had a ton of fun. The biggest challenge working on a comedic film from what I've what I've experienced in my in the past and what I experienced while working on this one was trying to not overdo it. Uh, knowing that the lines are funny but not trying to in make it seem as though on camera that you're intending it to be funny. When you're doing a comedy, you're supposed to make sure that everything is real. 
it's it, you're you're in the moment it's up to the viewer it's up to the audience to determine if it's funny or not in the moment working on a comedy is very it's it you have to treat it as if it's serious it's a serious scene um, so the tough part about working on a comedic film is trying to find the actual truth behind the the delivery of the dialogue the most difficult scene for me it's between two because they were all so funny and we had so much trouble committing like to staying serious and I think for me it was the scene where I come back with um, water piss all over my pants and I'm talking to Elaine and Tommy and I'm I'm trying to figure out if Tommy is showing Elaine the photo of me going to the bathroom I'm like what, what, what's going on? Like, what are you doing? Like, it was just unreal how funny it was. But if I have to choose one, it has to be when I'm in the hallway talking to David's character. And when I say that this was the toughest scene or the hardest scene to do, not because it was just hard, hard to understand the character or understand the goal of my character or David's character, but just getting through the scene without having to crack up. It was the scene where we are in the hallway and David approaches me because I have a certain something on my phone that he doesn't want anybody to see. It's exploiting his character a little bit and in that scene, David's eyebrow, while we were working on that scene, David's eyebrow just kept going like this, twitching and twitching and I couldn't stop laughing because it was just, like, like I said before, trying to find the truth in the scene. You kinda couldn't. In, 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 or at least you had to, you had to try and find the truth and to see if you were, you could actually see yourself doing what your character is doing. I, it was very difficult for me, but it really was just, it's a funny scene, it's the hallway scene, it's right after David's character is going to the bathroom. I can't wait for you guys to see it, it's my favorite scene. I think my favorite scene to shoot in the film was when I was actually like, going to the bathroom and the door swung open and we had this this sort of slow motion capture of me like running to the door and and the process of filming it of actually acting in it and like working with the camera and Nick was incredible it was such a cool experience to be able to do something that's a little you know um, farther out there, a little less than standard, and like artistically like a great choice. I don't think David's really like his character at all. Uh, I, I, oh, I hope I'm not like my character at all. I hope people don't look at me like that. I think Nick's advice that he gave to me when I called him on the phone in that one scene was very true to Nick. Just like, get him back, you know? Don't take life so seriously. I think the viewers will be thinking, this poor guy Mike played by David, this poor guy Mike can't win. He just can't win. You'll see why. The audience is gonna walk away thinking, wow, these characters were so realistic, and yet somehow, you know, with the advent of this new iPhone, with like all this technology at hand, like people are gonna, it's just affecting us in so many ways. And, and so, it's really like dramatizing all of our actions. And I think Nick did such a good job of, of focusing on how we interact with this new technology that's like, it's getting so out of hand. And it's really, the audience is going to walk away thinking like, oh man, am I gonna freak out about every little thing that happens on my iPhone? I think the message that the film is giving is that uh, what goes around comes around. Don't take things too hard. Sometimes don't take them too light. Treat people the way that you want to be treated in any kind of environment. Also, really, karma is another is another message about this. Car karma is a in a very lighthearted way, though, of course. The message that the film is giving to me is just don't take life so seriously. You know, there are small things that can stress you out and you know put you over the edge and honestly a life stressing about everything isn't worth living i think what's going to surprise people about this film is that it's actually based on true events it actually happened um 
I'm not gonna say the two people that it was based off of, but it was based off of true events. If you don't know, now you know. I think after watching this film, the viewers are gonna be wondering like, am I Mike or am I Ryan? Am I a bully or am I a victim? Hi, I'm Tommy Walker. My name is David Bondaroff, and don't forget to check out print on clearboxpictures.com. While you're on their website, make sure you go check out our most recent short film, Before I Go.